Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at packets with a walkthrough of code.org's Unit 2, Lesson 5. Alright, let's get going. If you're looking just for review questions, please skip ahead now. So in the previous videos, we looked at the Internet Simulator. We saw that the Internet Simulator sent messages all in one chunk. But real life is not like this. Think about it for a second. Maybe your message is really big. Maybe you lose that message. Well, that would be terrible. So this is not how the internet works. So what happens in real life is that internet messages are split up into small, small pieces. Those pieces are sent along their way. They are reassembled at the end. And then you end up with something like this, a web page, a file, or whatever. It's alive. And for the next section, we're going to use the internet simulator to see how this works. So here I am once again with the internet simulator. I've logged into two tabs, two tabs. So basically, I'm going to talk to myself. I'm going to select my section for both. And for this activity to work, this is super important. I need to add multiple routers. So I'm going to add five routers. And each of my tabs will join different routers. So tab one here will join router one. And tab two will join router five. So on router five, my IP address is 5.4. And on router one, my IP address is 1.4. So I'm going to send a message from tab one to tab two. So I need to send it to the correct IP address. This will be 5.4. And let's say, what is your favorite fruit? Once again, with a simulator, just as real life, everything gets converted from human to binary. So R1.4 gets converted into binary. 5.4 gets converted into binary. My message is, what is your favorite fruit? Each letter in that message gets converted to a number. That number gets converted to binary. And as far as which number the letter gets converted to, we use the ASCII encoding system to figure that out. If you notice here, it says 240 out of 80 bits and it's red. Hold on to that for a second. But I'm going to send the message right now. So the message got sent. I'll go into tab two and wait a little bit. And here is the message or part of the message. What is? And as you can see, it's missing the end of the message, your favorite fruit. So let's take a look at this again. What is your, and you see right here, there's a limit in the maximum size of message that I can send. And this simulates the concept of packets. You basically take your big message, you split them up into little pieces, and each of these little pieces is called a packet. And why do we do this? It's because some messages are really, really too big to send. And if somehow a message gets lost along the way, you don't want to lose the whole thing. So we split it up into a lot of little packets. We send all these packets along and they get reassembled at the end. Super important to know for the AP exam. So let me just try to reduce it. What, let's send what is your favorite fruit? So we'll send that along. Again, I've split my entire message into little messages. Each of these little messages is called a packet. Let's see what happens. So here we are. And it looks like, remember my message is what is your favorite fruit? And the message I received is missing a what? It has is, it has your, but it's missing favorite fruit. So what's going on here? Well, this is simulating the real internet. The real internet is not really reliable. And it pretty much says it right here. Packets may drop with some probability. Packets may not arrive in order. I could investigate this further by looking at the router logs. So I'll click the router tab, click log browser, and I will show all routers. So you see here, this first message, which was what got dropped. Is seemed to work. It went from router one to router three to five. Your worked, which from router one to router five directly. But favorite, favorite went from router one to router two and then got dropped. And fruit went from router one to router five and also got dropped. So we have huge chunks of messages that did not make it through. And again, this by default is what the internet is really like. So let's send a message back. So I'm on tab two and I think you know how it works. So I'm going to fast forward it. The message is, what was that? I didn't understand the words out of your mouth. Don't nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. So let's go back to tab one, who's going to try to receive this message. And if you look, this time it's even worse. If I check through the logs, what I've highlighted in red, these are what got dropped, so it never got through. But on top of that, these are the ones that arrived out of order. So you have two problems. The first is that packets are dropped. And the second problem is that packets are out of order. And if I look at the router logs, it will show me the same thing. Tons of stuff gets dropped. And if I look at it closely, you can see it going out of order as well. So there is a protocol that works like this. It's called UDP. And if you're using the code.org worksheet, they call this protocol one. UDP stands for user datagram protocol, but you will not need to know that for the exam. UDP is on the exam, but it's not totally obvious in what way, if you ask me. 
But again, if you're working along with the code.org worksheet, you'll need to know that packets take different paths. And you can see this with the router logs. You'll need to know that packets arrive out of order and sometimes they can be dropped. And one thing that's not on that worksheet, but I think you will need to know or you will want to know is that UDP and IP are two different protocols that work together. So you could think of it like, I don't know, two different traffic laws, maybe a speeding law, maybe a seatbelt law that work together. So then you might be asking, well, if UDP doesn't fix these drop packets, what the heck does it do? Well, this is not on the test, but it does help with the concept of ports. So you know that a packet goes to a particular IP address, but it also goes to a particular port. You could think of this like a side door, the front door, the back door. And so for instance, all web pages are served at certain ports. So you're going to a certain IP, a certain door in that IP address, and that's what UDP helps manage. But again, this is not on the test. It's just in case you're wondering what the heck it does if it doesn't fix these drop packets. It's about this time that code.org brings up the concept of protocol two, which you will find out later is called TCP. And they want you to fix these problems as part of an activity. What problems are they? One, the packets get there out of order. And two, the packets get dropped. So I'll give you the solution in a second, but maybe you'll want to pause the video and try it out yourself. So here's the solution. I'm back in the internet simulator. Once again, I'm going to log into two different tabs as myself. I need five routers for this to work, just like last time. First tab will join router one. The second tab will join router five. So I need to send to 5.8. Here's the trick. I'm going to number every packet before I send it. So my message will be, hi, my name is Dr. Wu. And now let's check with tab two. So I receive a message that's out of order, but because the packets are numbered, I can easily rearrange them. The message I receive is name is hi, Dr. Wu. And I can rearrange this to hi, name is Dr. Wu. This numbering also solves my dropped problem because I see, what am I missing? I'm missing two. So here I am in tab two, 5.8, and I'm going to ask tab one, 1, 1.1, to resend the missing packet and only the missing packet. So my message will be one missing, two packet, three, two. And let's see what we get. So the message that I get is packet missi, and you see that it's truncated a little bit, it's cut off, and that's just the packet size limiting the size of my message. But I have another problem in that I don't know that I'm missing the third packet. So if the end of the message gets cut off, I don't know. And so now we need to do one other thing to fix that. So besides numbering my packets, I need to send one last packet at the end that says end of message. So putting it all together, I'm going to one, number all my packets, and two, my last packet will be something like end of message. So the other person knows I'm done. So the final result looks something like this. The receiver receives a lot of packets, and they all have numbers. So if the packets come out of order, we can rearrange them. If there's a packet that's dropped and doesn't make it through, we can ask for it again. And we know the sender is done sending because there's an end of message packet. So there's an actual name for protocol number two, code.org's protocol number two, and that's called TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which you will not need to know for the exam. It is on the APCSP framework. It is not clear how much you actually need to know about TCP, but you should definitely recognize that it's a protocol. Again, we know that packets take different paths. You will need to know this. They will arrive out of order and be dropped, and you will need to know this as well. You may or may not need to know that TCP is gonna provide error correction, and it does this by numbering each packet and telling you when the message ends. And TCP and IP are different protocols that work together. At this point, code.org recommends that you watch their video. You can click on the upper right of this video. The link will also be in the description below. Code.org question number two. Which of the following is true regarding the way information is transmitted on the internet. Well, right away, you can see C is not true. Hopefully you remember the packets take different paths depending on current traffic patterns or maybe what hardware is down. So right off the bat, we will eliminate C. We can also eliminate A because it's basically the same thing. We do not have one dedicated path. Packets can take different paths. The keywords here are dedicated and direct, it's not that. We also saw in the simulation that you may have a packet that gets dropped, but you don't need to resend the whole thing. You only need to send what didn't get through. So that is not true. And this saves you a lot of internet traffic. So instead of resending a huge, huge, huge long message, you only have to send a few packets. So that leaves us D, which is true. And our answer is gonna be D. AP board defines a data stream as chunks of data encapsulated in packets. Last question is terminology matching. I think the easiest ones here have to do with UDP and TCP. Just remember that UDP is out of order and TCP is error correction, so things are fixed. After that, we'll go back to our old vocab word, 
which is the internet protocol. Remember, that's a different protocol, different from TCP and UDP. And that's one where, among other things, IP addresses are associated with it. So that's the rule that IP or internet protocol follows. A packet's going to be a piece of data or a chunk of data. Remember, you take your initial message and you split it up into little chunks. And the last one is data stream, which is really just describing a bunch of packets. All right, here we go with the practice questions. Number one, which is not a common protocol used on the internet? So it's not super clear what you're gonna to need to know for the APCSP exam here, but this is a bare minimum of what you need to know. You'll need to recognize that IP, TCP, and UDP are common protocols used on the internet. So eliminate those three, what you have left is IMP, which is actually an old webmail software, but not really used very much anymore. So the answer is C. Question two, which of these are true? One, packets are received in the order sent. We saw this was not true. We saw this in the simulation the packets can arrive out of order. Two, packets can travel different paths to the destination. This is true, and we saw it in the simulation. Three, packets enable privacy on the internet. So the thing about packets here, you just wanna know the packets are messages broken up into little chunks, that they can arrive out of order, and that they can arrive with different paths. And everything else is noise and nonsense. So anything about privacy, viruses, doesn't count. It's pretty narrowly focused. So three is not true. So our answer is B, two only. Question three, another packet question. You're likely to get maybe one packet question on the exam. One, packets are data chopped up into chunks. You saw that this was true in the simulation. Two, packets will always take the shortest path to the destination. This is not true. You saw in the simulation that this was not true. In real life, truthfully, packets will usually take the fastest path, but again, not always. When it comes to AP, just know that packets will take different paths to the destination. And three, packets are always encrypted, so they are not readable by the internet companies. You saw this wasn't true, but even more than that, the AP will try to confuse you by mixing things together, putting encryption where it really doesn't belong. Uh, but packets have really a narrow focus. They're split up into chunks. They may arrive out of order. They may get dropped. And that's pretty much it. So the answer we're looking for is A, one only. Question four, here are some questions to ask about UDP and TCP. It's not clear to me that you'll need to know this, but just in case, for sure you won't need to know more than this. Which of these are true? One, with the TCP protocol, packets may arrive out of order, but will be reordered upon receipt. So we know this is true. TCP is the one that reorders them. Two, with the UDP protocol, packets are not reordered upon receipt. And again, we know that UDP is one where things just go randomly. They don't get reordered. They don't get resent. So two is also true. This was protocol one in the lab. Three, if a packet is not received, the entire message needs to be resent. So this was in the code.org question as well. One of the big reasons we use packets is that if one part of the message does not make it, I don't have to resend the whole darn thing, which can be very, very long. So the answer here is D, one, and two. And question five, which of these are true? One, UDP is faster than TCP as it does not keep track of packet receipt. This is true. This is really the whole reason why we use UDP at all. It's fast. Two, TCP guarantees accuracy and reliability. This is also true. And again, this is the whole reason why we use TCP. Three, internet protocol is generally used in conjunction with other protocols such as UDP and TCP. This is also true, as I've mentioned before. We use these together. It's sort of like one might be like a seatbelt law and one might be a speeding law. You can use protocols together. So your answer here is D, one, two, and three. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.